Senator Wyden. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is going to be a question for you, Dr. Hall, and let me just kind of set the table here. The summer begins next week. More than half of my state is already suffering extreme or severe drought. 17 Oregon counties have been declared to be in a state of emergency because of water shortages. This is the first time that Deschutes County has been in a drought emergency three years in a row. Now, drought conditions have been so bad in central Oregon that for 18 straight months, the Wikiup Reservoir, the primary source of irrigation water for Jeff Jefferson County, set record lows for months and contents. Now, Commissioner Tutun knows how drought has hurt the Klamath Basin, where the lack of water is devastating the farms and tribal resources and causing residential wells to run dry. And then on top of this, the first responders and experts on the ground expect that the drought conditions are going to fuel wildfire risks beyond even the historically bad conditions of the past couple of years. Dr. Hall, you talked eloquently about the need for collaboration, good faith collaboration, because that's how you bring people together to tackle these challenges. In Oregon, we call it the Oregon way. The best ideas are ones that have a broad uh, buy-in from all of those who are actually impacted. I wrote the Watershed Results Act to encourage people to come together to expand and improve watershed opportunities, looking back at both agriculture and environmental needs. Specifically, my legislation would fund pilot projects to address the impact of drought on watersheds. These pilot projects use the best available science and would identify quantifiable outcomes before they were able to secure funding. So what are your thoughts with respect to these science-based collaborative approaches? Thank you very, very much, Senator Wyden, and uh, very much uh, a applaud your efforts to bring good science into, into decision-making uh, through your Water Rushed Results Act. And uh, as I described before, I think this, this concept of bringing the best minds together, bringing all the ideas from the different stakeholders together in a dynamic, collaborative way is the way we're going to shape the future of the West that we want to see. And we need good information for that. The quicker that we can get on the same page, understand the, the challenge that we're facing, what our current situation is and our trajectory is, the more quickly we can get to solving problems. A handful of ideas of, of things that I think are, are important in our work where we need better science and data is in the area of proactive groundwater management. We have this incredible natural infrastructure below our ground that, that frankly provides the drinking water and water supply for most of the rural west. And we, we can better understand that if we invest in the right data and begin to use that and manage it more proactively. Uh, I think um, another issue is short-term forecasting. We have so much better information now about how, what's actually going to happen, not just uh, today, but over the next several days in our rain, in our rain and snow systems. And knowing that data uh, sooner allows us to make better decisions on, on reservoir operations uh, and improve the, the uh, yield of the projects that we already have in place. Very good. One question for you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, glad to see you. You've had a lot of experience with water issues. Uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law provided $8.3 billion for investments in Western water infrastructure and climate resilience. I'm not sure, I guess my colleagues have touched on it, but I'm not sure it's clear in our part of the world what steps the Bureau of Reclamation is taking to ensure the best possible efficiency in the delivery of these funds to get good science out there to manage uh, water management in, uh, in our part of the world. Thank you, Senator. One of the things that we did this year that I'd mentioned is step one is to hire the hirers and hire the people who can help get out the grants who specialize in acquisitions and certainly hire engineers. And so we staffed up, I think, by 86 people just to be able to implement bill and get those funds out the door. Uh, certainly, transparency in our actions, um, in our FY22 plan, our FY23 
three spend plan, talking with Congress about our path forward, so really communicating with everyone across the board. But certainly on Friday, we get the privilege of breaking ground on a $100 million dam safety investment in California to celebrate our 120th anniversary. And we're coming to Yellowstone in Montana to do the same thing. Thank, thank, thank you. Were you finished? Yes, Senator, okay. thank you. Great. I think the point I was just trying to make, Mr. Chairman, if you set the politics aside in this area of watersheds and drought challenges, it's amazing what you can do. And I won't bore my colleagues with long stories, but when I came to the Senate, a little uh, bit after I arrived, I rushed to the floor with a brilliant idea for letting uh, government work across agencies and with the private sector on watersheds. And when I got there, the chairman of the committee, and Senator Barrasso knows him, uh, Senator Gorton said, Ron, this is a really good idea, but maybe we ought to correct it. And he went out and did a bunch of corrections, put it in a big bill, and when I arrived home, people said, this watershed approach the Wyden Amendment is a brilliant idea. And I turned to my staff and I said, gee, I don't know what the Wyden Amendment is. And it's now being used across jurisdictions with the private sector because Slade Gorton was willing as a senior Republican to help a very new uh, senator who wanted to do the right thing, wanted to work with people. So Senator Barrasso and our colleagues here there is hope on these watershed issues. There is hope on drought because it does cross party lines. And let's get uh, let's get together and get it done. Thank you.